I've been climbing Mount Ugo at the border of Benguet and Nueva Vizcaya provinces for over a decade. First, as a member of the Philippine Skyrunning Association, at times competing at its annual Akiathlon race since 2012. Recently, I mountain biked much of the same trail with my friend JP Alipio, who was scouting the route for his own trail race, the Cordillera Mountain Ultra. Our ride was an out and back two day route that started and ended where I left my car at Barangay Tinongdan and had a turnaround point at the campsite near the peak of Mount Ugo. We didn't bring any camping gear, just a change of clothes, and instead slept and ate at a homestay in Sitio Luzon, halfway between Tinongdan and Mount Ugo. Many of the old trail signs put up for the first Akiathlon a decade ago were still there. It was bloody fun, literally. On our way back, just a kilometer from the campsite, while we were descending and I was trailing behind Jeep, I crashed. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I was sent over the handlebars, hurtling down a ravine with my bicycle tumbling down right after me, a handlebar end smashing into my right temple. I had to pick up myself and the bike, with JP now far ahead of me beyond shouting distance. At a place with no mobile phone signal, I had to get out of that ravine, meet up with JP, and bike for two hours more to get back to my car. After which, I had to drive some 80 kilometers all the way to Baguio City to make sure I didn't have any serious injuries to my skull or my brain. When I finally got to a hospital, they just put a band-aid on me. In over a decade of climbing Mount Ugo, the one thing I've never done before was go bikepacking or camping overnight. And I had to do it soon. Much of the trail was already being bulldozed to make way for a paved road linking Tinongdan Benguet to Kayapan Nueva Vizcaya. During our mountain bike ride, JP and I had to hike over several landslides caused by the ongoing road construction that undercuts the slopes above. I had to go bikepacking to Mount Ugu soon before the trail was completely ruined. Joining me in bikepacking Mount Ugo was Mike Kassen, proprietor of outdoor long custom bikepacking bags and bitography. I made arrangements to sleep at a homestay in Kayapa made from shipping container vans. After a full good night's sleep and a leisurely breakfast, we ventured forth at around 9.30 a.m. From the get-go, the climb out of Kayapa was brutal. The farther we went away from town, the rougher the route got. Tough as it was, the best thing about this trip was that I had a friend to share it with. Mike, a professional photographer, took excellent pictures that speak for themselves. That neither of us went solo is just as well because on some sections, just carrying a fully loaded bike packing rig on the few but tough unrideable sections of the route 
is at least a two-man effort. Once we got on the single track trail nearing the campsite, it was flowy and nearly all of it was rideable. As long as you're in the right gear when the trail suddenly points up again. with plenty of daylight to spare, but we didn't waste any of it. We methodically set up our tents and cooked our first dinner. My shelter is a Big Agnes Fly Creek one-person bikepacking specific tent. I inflated my Thermarest Uberlite sleeping pad with a flex tail pump that can double as a camp light. The stove is an MSR Whisperlite Universal with white gas fuel. My cook set consists of a collapsible silicon C to Summit X kettle and X mug, as well as a titanium long handled spoon. I used my C to Summit Spark SP1 down sleeping bag. For camp, I wore a budget ensemble from Decathlon a merino wool long sleeve shirt and long johns as a base layer, a down puffy jacket as a mid layer, and, when it drizzled, waterproof yet breathable jacket and rain pants as an outer shell. USB powered fairy lights illuminated my tent. Now that we're done with all the essential things to do for the day, let's backtrack and talk about my bike packing rig and kit. The 2019 Giant Anthem 29er is a carbon fiber cross-country bike, so it's light enough and tough enough for climbing mountain trails. Having full suspension allows the bike to maintain traction, even on the roughest ascents. Dual-sided stages crank power meters help me to pace my efforts on epic distances. The 28-tooth Shimano XT chain ring paired to an 11-51 to cassette allows me to climb steep trails even when fully loaded. Vittoria 29 by 2.35 Mezcal tires have tightly spaced center lugs that offer low rolling resistance, yet have widely spaced lugs at the sides that bite into dirt. The FRM OB1 dropper post can't handle the weight of a huge and heavy saddlebag, so instead I'm using Ortlieb gravel panniers which can carry more stuff than any saddlebag. The Old Man Mountain Divide Rack attaches directly to the rear axle, so any weight, stress, and flexing on the seat stays is minimized. Beside the Ortlieb fork packs are two water bottle cages attached with Topeak Versa mount straps to the suspension fork. They contain a 1 liter water bottle and an MSR fuel bottle. Mounted on the handlebar is a Salsa EXP cradle that keeps the Aero Heavy Duty dry bag stable, even on rough terrain. The Garmin 1040 Solar Navigational Computer has a battery life of 45 hours and can be recharged by the Sun Dynamo hub that also powers the sine wave beacon headlight and USB port. Ergon GS1 grips have wings that distribute pressure on the pond and prevent numbness. The 2-liter Apidura Racing Top Tube Bag is stabilized by the ASS clip from 76 Projects. The custom-fitted full-frame bag by Outdoor Lump is made with ripstop waterproof X-Pack fabric. Storing my water in a 3-liter Apidura frame bag bladder keeps my center of gravity low. Now back to the campsite, the colors of dusk 
turn the fog purple, then nightfall. With nothing else to do, Mike showed off his skills at camp cuisine. Second dinner was seasick or fried pork cheeks. Then it was sleep. The next day, after eating some of Mike's leftover rice paired with a can of sardines and some instant coffee, we rode off to Tinongda. Barely a kilometer from the campsite, the single track trail was already being demolished by road crews to make way for the highway. In just a span of 30 days, backhoes and bulldozers had advanced over 3 kilometers through the mountain. Mountain biking the dirt road was still fun, for now. In just a few months, very little will be left of the single track trail that totters on the knife edge of the mountain ridge and weaves its way through the forest. Soon when it's all dirt road, gravel bikes, not mountain bikes, will be the best tool for the job. And soon after that, when it's all paved and cemented, touring bikes and road bikes can go through Mount Ugo, and they will have to share the road with trucks, buses, motorcycles, exhaust fumes and garbage, eateries and tourists, landslides and even more trash, deforestation, development, and land grabbing. Everyone with access to this mountain will destroy it. The trail, the forest, and the locals may soon be gone. I wish I could be hopeful that this road will bring prosperity to local communities and raise awareness by exposing more people to natural beauty. But we've all seen how roads turn mountains into dump sites and garbage heaps in Rizal and in many other places in the Philippines, displacing indigenous people and favoring crony billionaire real estate developers. I hope this video doesn't just preserve a memory of what once was. I hope this video leads people to fight to preserve what still is before it's all gone.